This is my new favorite freaking vegetable. It's a shallot. It's cuter than an onion, milder in flavor, and a lot of chefs use this. With the help of Anthony Bourdain and the French, we are going to make a delicious French dish with this cute little guy. Welcome back to Bourdain. Everybody should know how to use a knife. Use everything, waste nothing. Let's start at the beginning. It ain't that hard, okay? Hope you're doing good. My name is Mitch May. We're learning how to cook with Anthony Bourdain's cookbook. Today, we are working with filet of beef, sauce porto with roasted shallots. We're gonna take some cuts of meat, sear them up all sexy-like, make a delicious sauce with the shallots. Hopefully, it kicks ass. I have Bourdain's book linked down below in the description if you'd like to join me. If not, just follow along and hopefully I don't cut myself this time. Let's get moving. To begin, we start with 12 peeled shallots. To peel these, I took off the tip of each side and then I precariously took my giant knife into the shallot and peeled away the external layer. These will go in a small, oven safe saute pan. I used a little cast iron guy with two tablespoons of butter. Wrap with aluminum foil and this will go in one gnarly looking toaster oven at 325 for 45 minutes. While those are cooking low and slow, thinly slice one shallot. After about 45 minutes to an hour, these are what they look like. After removing the shallots, I noticed there's a lot of luscious, amazing liquid at the bottom of this pan. So I figure steak and potatoes, we're gonna add these potatoes, toss them in this already used pan, which is infused with shallot goodness. This kind of just felt right to put the cut sides of the potatoes facing down on the pan. I think I may have seen that somewhere. And we're gonna put this in the oven at 325, once again, for about half an hour to 45 minutes. Next we have two eight ounce cuts of meat. Now these are not fillets like the recipe calls for, these are actually sirloin cuts. They're cheaper and they have more flavor. And that's something Bourdain actually comments on quite often. His favorite cuts of meat actually have a little more chew and a little more flavor and a little more attitude, if you will. I noticed there's still a little chill in the middle, so we're gonna give them another half hour to temper out and come up to room temperature. Coming back to our steaks, they are now well tempered. I give them a quick pat down. One tablespoon of oil into a large cast iron skillet and we bring that up to medium high heat until it's got these ripples going on. And then Bourdain says sear. Another thing I like here is he doesn't say how long, just get a nice color. I pulled that a little too early, let them sit for another two minutes. It took about three to four minutes each side. And after the flip, I add one tablespoon of magical butter and base these sinks. Does this do anything? Not sure, but it looks fancy and it kind of just felt right. After a nice searing on both sides, we go to the oven at 375 into another skillet and Bourdain says seven minutes. So we're gonna try that out. Now we make a wonderful pan sauce. We remove that excess fat, add one tablespoon of butter, thinly sliced shallots and cook this at medium heat. Now I did lose some footage, unfortunately. After four minutes, we add one teaspoon of flour and cook for another minute. Then we start in three ounces of port wine and deglaze the pan, scraping up all that goodness. And then we come up to adding one one cup of veal stock. I didn't have veal stock, so I just want chicken stock. Stir everything together, and then we add our secret ingredient, which Bourdain calls for, demi glace or glaze. Not sure how to say it, but I sure know how to make it. Thanks to Bourdain's recipe, I'll link it up here in the top right. I added about one to two teaspoons. After seven minutes, I whip the steaks out and let them rest. The sauce has reduced and has a nice consistency to it, and we will strain this through a strainer. Yeah, that's a tiny little strainer. You can use a sieve. This is just like a regular fine mesh strainer. That sauce is looking heavenly, and these potatoes are looking freaking crisp and golden brown. Sauce goes back on the stove, medium heat, and I add the juices from our resting steak. A little trick I picked up, which I am freaking loving. We add some butter, thicken up the sauce, and we are good to go. I decided to film this in the living room because we got some serious sunlight coming through. I think the steak is cooked pretty well. Plate up with three cute little shallots as Bourdain recommends. Plate up these oven baked shallot butter potatoes and it would not be French without the sauce drizzled on top. Cutting into this, there's a little resistance. It's not a filet after all, but the thing was damn tender. In this lighting, we're looking at a solid medium rare. Rare? I'm not too positive on the actual colors of steak. All I know is this freaking smacked. It absolutely blew my mind. In the back of my head, I'm thinking, oh, another steak, here we go, another sauce. But holy crap, it left me speechless. And I'm glad I'm doing a voiceover because I would not have much to say. That temp of the steak, I think we freaking nailed. Thank you for spending your time with me. This was Back to Bourdain. Stay organized, clean up after yourself. You do the best you can.